All right. Diaz versus Nunes is a reality. Nick Diaz, KJ Nunes will be fighting. They were first thought about it was going to be uh, Mayhem Miller versus Nick Diaz. But uh, no, it looks like that uh, they are setting up the KJ Nunes versus Nick Diaz rematch. Of course, Nunes defeated uh, Diaz via TKO due to cuts. But in that fight, I got to say, I mean, I looked at it again recently, and Nunes was putting the fight to Diaz. I mean, I, I looked at it as objectively as possible. We're big Diaz fans. We don't like to see our, our boys fall here. But this one, Nunes was getting the better of him. It was frustrating uh, Diaz. And, of course, the cut just uh, you know compounded things. And so now they're looking to set this up for Strike Force's October 9th event in San Jose. The question is, and I read through the article, and I couldn't find what weight That's they would fight at. Because Nunes is fighting at lightweight, 155. And Diaz has fought as... Uh, uh, as heavy as recently, 185. Most recently, I think the last fight was uh, was in Jaromskis at 170. But uh, Caesar Gracie, where he trained, said he would never fight lightweight again. He'd never fight 160. So I got to believe there's going to be a catch weight. I'm thinking 165 or something. I think he could make it down to 165. And uh, I guess his moon's cool with that because that's 10 pounds more than what he's fighting at uh, right now, lightweight. Mm -hmm. So it's less of a cut for Diaz, more of a bulk up for Nunes. But uh, intriguing nonetheless, what do you think of the match? I can't wait. This is going to be a great fight. I think, you know, of course, it's a grudge match. We talked about it last week as far as uh, will, will it happen or won't it, and we kind of thought it wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I think the, the weight, I was, as you're reading it the whole time, I was thinking, okay, what's the weight class? Because that was kind of a, yeah, the the problem. Issue. But, uh, no, I, I think this will be a good one. We'll be able to see. Because remember that uh, Nick had gotten his, uh, what is it, actually the bone, uh, kind of shaved down because it was protruding so much, yeah, and he had all that problem, scar, yeah. and he had all the scar tissue. So he's had, he, even though when we saw him, it was just after that, so he's pretty swollen because it's, yeah. it's still, it's very, it protrudes Perhaps, quite a bit. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. I mean, I think that uh, Nick has gotten better since then. I think that KJ News looked great in his last fight, yeah. but uh, you know the deal is if if KJ feels that somehow he's going to be able to make it the transition also to compete against professional boxers. He should be able to really uh, dominate the stand-up, and, and we'll see if he can do that against uh, Nick. It's a, it's a very intriguing matchup. Like I said, I'd love to know what that – it's got to be a catchweight. I'd love to know what that catchweight's going to be. We'll find out. But the fact of the matter is this October in San Jose, KJ News, Nick Diaz, it is happening to rematch. I tell you what, Strike Force is the best thing that could have ever happened to Nick Diaz. Because remember, he kind of – yeah, because he kind of left the UFC, kind of, you know, like, ah, you know, he was right there, but just a gatekeeper, yeah. and he is a star there, yeah. and that place is going to be going crazy for him, and I think KJ News, that fight and the, the whole drama between them is going to really up the ante, I think mm -hmm. it's going to be great for both guys, because KJ seems to, after he got rid of that manager, well, you know, 100% different guy, people like him, and, and, and it, if he continues to win, I think he could be a star too. Same manager that Brandon Vera had that caused all the uh, uh, problems yeah. in, in Vera's exactly. career as well. Basically changed the trajectory of Vera's career. Yeah. You think he was really on his way up? He was 8-0 at the yeah. time. He was, well, like did, John jo he was talked about like yeah. John Jones. Remember, he time. was going to be the first heavyweight and light heavyweight holding the title at the same at time. Same time. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no. No, no. It was the manager's fault. <laughs> All right, well, that'll do it for this epic volume of the Lights Out Show. JDH, anything else you'd like to add? No, hey, look, I'm wearing the Lights Out Show t-shirt. If you like the, the uh, what is it, uh, large, medium, and small, yep, that's what uh, we, we have a few available. We sold out of the extra large, so uh, go ahead and get yourself shirt. And, you know, some guys are saying, hey, you know what, they, they, you know, their, their TLOS shirt is cracking. They need a new one, you know, and this and that. you got to buy the other one so we can get to the new shirt. Yep, yep, absolutely. It's only 15 bucks if you buy it in the U.S., $19 outside the United States. That includes tax, shipping, handling the works. So pick up a TLOS t-shirt in small, medium, or large. And uh, But yeah, enjoy uh, enjoy the Lights Out Show on iTunes, on YouTube, on thelightsoutshow.com. We're everywhere now, so enjoy. Thanks very much for everyone who made this show possible, including but not limited to Dr. MMA, Tim Lee, for your show contributions, Eric Commander for all your support over, at, er, over there at uh, MMARatings.net, as well as Mortis, the virus, taking care of our forums. And for the JDH, I'm Chris Breeze. TLOS, you've just been proving to the best in MMA. Why? Because it's